Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So we are here at the Neshaminy Creek Dock, checking out the electric folding bike. Now, uh, I make that declaration because that's actually what this bike is called. This bike is called Electric Folding Bike. It's actually from the guys here in Pennsylvania at Electric Bike Technologies. Uh, I'm here with Alec. He's helping me out on checking out these bikes along with a lo lot of other ventures. And you can check those out at electricbikereview.com. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and focus on this folding bike because it's actually pretty unique. It's got some newer features that I haven't seen before. So let's jump in. Uh, so with the electric folding bike, you know, that's a, it's a rather uh, down to business kind of name. Uh, it is a folder. So you do have the battery built into uh, the frame right here. There's like a latch to access it. You do have the motor in the middle of the bike as well. So that kind of keeps the weight evenly distribu distributed. And that folding lever will actually fold the entire bike in half. So you'll notice kind of like these um, pivot points on the handlebar and on the seat post tubes and everything. So that will allow the handlebars and the seat to kind of come down and then the whole entire bike folds in half into kind of like this sort of box uh, kind of shape and we'll show you how that works in a little bit but that's like the purpose of this bike is to fold up so that you can toss it into like a closet or into an airplane or a boat you know if you got a boat it's actually why we came here or if you want to put it in the trunk of a car maybe into like a metro uh, train or something like that so this is really kind of like a last mile uh, sort of solution something that you can take with you and then do that last little bit to get you to the office or to get you home or to get you to your next destination of travel uh, so that's the concept of this bike but aside from that it is a fully functional bicycle as well as a fully functional electric bike it might look uh, rather odd but it does have all of those um, all of that utility all built into this frame so let's go ahead and talk about some of the nuts and bolts of it and then we'll go ahead and jump into the ride portion uh, so starting with the mechanical system uh, one of my favorite things is actually the reflect reflective wall on this tire. It's kind of an odd place to start, but it is something that kind of stands out to me uh, as a feature you don't see a lot on folding bikes. Uh, so there are other folding bikes out there, but a lot of them kind of cut corners in certain ways. This one's actually pretty good. They have a really good combination of features. I like the reflective sidewall because if you didn't know, uh, a lot of accidents happen to uh, cyclists as they're riding along in a dark place and they get hit by from the side. Uh, so having some kind of reflection on the side of the bike is really important. And if you travel, if you travel a lot, then you might be riding in all sorts of different places and all sorts of different time zones. So that's actually a really cool consideration to have that reflective sidewall on the tire. It is, of course, a fairly small tire to kind of keep its folding utility. This is a 20 inch by 1.75. So the 1.75 is the width. You got a pretty good tire on here as well, aside from just the sidewall. It also has some puncture resistance that's built into the tread itself, uh, which is nice. And the last thing you want to do is fix a flat when you're traveling around. So it's a pretty good tread on here as well for kind of like a road application or some nice flat terrain. Uh, some 13 gauge spokes coming into the hub here. This is a solid fork, so no suspension on this, but they, that also keeps the weight down of the total bicycle. So it's easier to kind of cart around places. It does have the brace for this plastic fender up here. Again, kind of a weight savings thing, uh, which is important for a folding bike if you got to pick the thing up. I do have a metal bracket for the headlight and I totally know why because plastic brackets are notorious for breaking. So that metal bracket for the headlight is really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, so in the sealed cartridge uh, bearings right in uh, built inside of the headset here comes up to this rather unique stem. Uh, so this stem, as you can see, is much longer than a traditional stem, which is, you know, just a couple inches tall. This one is consumes more or less the entirety of the bike to meet you uh, and a natural riding position. Uh, so it does have this lever and a locking mechanism. Uh, so let's go ahead and move over to this side. There is this little ring right here that you unlatch and that will actually uh, allow the locking lever to come out. I'll have Alex kind of pull it out so you can get a sense of scale. So he's gonna open up uh, that lever and then the whole entire handlebar system will just flop over. And it is screwed into place uh, inside of the headset there. And then when he pulls it back over, it's going to go right into position where you left off. And then lock it in, put that little safety latch, and you're good to go. Uh, so it also telescopes, which is kind of neat. You open up that little collar there, and then the handlebars will telescope up or down depending on the rider size. And as you can see, these are things you can do on the fly. So you can just open it up and off you go. 
and that's pretty neat. Yeah. All right, so these are a 600 millimeter wide handlebar. I wouldn't consider it um, wide by any stretch for a mountain bike or maybe a city bike, possibly. Uh, but they keep that narrow so to accommodate the folding aspect. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, on the handlebars, you have some nice stitched grips on here that are friction mounted. So if you grab them really tight and if you twist, they will kind of twist with you. You know, a little bit, but it probably won't come in handy too often. Uh, I do like a locking lever. Um, those are kind of nice, but nonetheless, these feel really good. They're very comfortable. They have like this little indentation or this uh, excess point for uh, grabbing your palm to kind of keep the fatigue down uh, while you're riding the bike. Uh, the brake levers are nice. They have a nice wide uh, four finger lever on there uh, to kind of grab the brakes. Uh, let's go ahead and jump down and talk about the brakes uh, a little bit. Uh, so this is a dual piston uh, brake caliper uh, from Zoom, uh, and this one is grabbing onto the 160 millimeter uh, disc brake. Uh, and I like the disc brakes a lot. Uh, it's very common to see folding bikes that have a V brake. And if you're going low speeds, I mean, that's that's fine. Um, but if you have an electric system on there, then the bike is generally going faster and of course weighs more on account of the electric system. Uh, so the disc brakes are an excellent addition to kind of like the typical folding bike platform. So, you know, good points for that one there. Uh, and that of course is mirrored on the back of the bike too. You have another set of disc brakes there. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back a little bit further. Uh, we kind of addressed uh, the handlebar area except for the little bell that's built into the left hand brake. So that is actually at the moment, let's see, we'll kind of move it out of the way a little bit from the throttle. There we go. The throttle is actually touching that part of the bell right there. Uh, so when you press on the bell, if you have something on there, then it's going to be a little bit muted. But if you get that out of the way, and you're set to go. Not a whole lot of real estate on these handlebars if you wanted to mount something extra. It's not really what the bike is made for, but if you wanted to get like a cell phone mount or something, you got a little bit of space here. You know, you got a few inches right there, um, but you're not gonna get anything big like a you know coffee cup or anything on there uh, without obstructing your view or the controls. So that's a totally different bike if you want to get that purpose. So on the frame of the bike, uh, we'll kind of show the folding aspect before um, we get to the electric, but it does have this handle right here that you can kind of grab. So a lot of bikes have like a handle on the back of the seat or perhaps on the, uh, the rack there. This one is dead in the middle, uh, which is pretty good. You get a good, a nice good balance on that thing. You can heft the whole thing up on that handle there, uh, which is nice. Uh, so the seat post tube, that's kind of interesting. Uh, the seat itself, we can kind of go over that really quick. It's about uh, six and a half, seven inch wide seat. It has some gel to it, not a whole lot of contour. It's kind of flat, but then again, this isn't made for long distance or long durations. You're gonna be riding a bike like this for a fairly short time. Um, but the seat post itself, it is rigid, so it doesn't have any kind of suspension to it, but that's not really the goal. Uh, the goal on this thing is for portability. And it's got that pretty good, because uh, it has not only the seat post itself, which fits into, I guess, the seat post sleeve, uh, so it's almost as if it has two seat posts. You can kind of open that up and you can adjust the main seat post and you can open up the next one to adjust the inner seat post there. And you can get a fairly low um, minimum saddle height. So this is actually a fun bike uh, for kids or for people who are just, uh, you know, vertically challenged. Uh, so a bike like this, you can get the seat down really low. You can actually lower the handlebars and on account of the lower standover height and the smaller wheels, it actually doesn't make a bad bad idea for someone to, to ride it uh, who's a little bit shorter. Uh, it does have a fairly long reach, so that's one thing I should mention, is that even with the handlebars set low and even with the seat low, it's still a pretty good reach over there. You know, if you put maybe a six-year-old over here, they might have Donkey Kong arms if they're gonna finally reach that thing. Uh, so they might have to grow up a little bit. If you wanted to get a bike for a kid or a preteen, then this would actually kind of grow with them in a sense, but they'd have to get that minimum reach in order to get to the controls in the first place. So maybe hold off another year or so. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't uh, disagree. Uh, so uh, continuing on with some of the mechanical parts, on the back end, you more or less have a mirror of the front end. You have the same tire with that reflective sidewall, the plastic fender, which is securely mounted on the brace here, as well as a, a tail light uh, on the rear, uh, which is red colored instead of the white one up front. Uh, same spokes and all of that. Uh, the wheels as well, which is a double walled wheel uh, on both sides, which can accommodate a V brake if you wanted to, but you'd have to put it on a different style of bike. Uh, so the kickstand uh, is also in the back, or also in the back end here. Uh, the kickstand is mounted what would be called a central kickstand uh, right there. It does actually come into contact with the um, pedals. 
or with the cranks rather, when you're pushing the bike backwards, assuming it's fully assembled like this, uh, when you're putting the bike backwards and pushing it through a garage or something like that, the crank can come into contact with the, the kickstand right there and then the bike will lock and it won't go roll back anymore until you resolve this, um, this little spot right here. It can go forward just fine. It's a really lightweight bike. You can pick it up, get the pedal out of the way, move the kickstand and off you go. But nonetheless, if your bike does lock up in that position, don't be alarmed. It's an easy fix. That's what it does. That could have been resolved if they had a kickstand in the back. However, that probably would compromise the folding aspect. It probably wouldn't make it as easy of a system to kind of crank up. So let's go over just the rack and then we'll jump into the folding aspect. Uh, so this is a rear rack that can actually handle panniers. It's fairly low to the ground, which is fine because it kind of keeps the weight of your load uh, fairly low. Uh, but it also can accommodate double side or if you wanted to get some bungee straps and mount things on here uh, It's pretty nice as well. It also protects the wheel if you're tossing this thing in a trunk or something like that This is a nice little framework to protect the wheel from getting hit around All right, also in the back here. You do have a 48 tooth chain ring uh, up at the front So that's a pretty tall chain ring um, but they make a pretty big size chain ring so that they can accommodate a little bit smaller of a derailleur to kind of keep things compact. Uh, so this is a seven speed uh, gear set with a Shimano Altus uh, for the derailleur itself. This is an 11 to 32 tooth uh, set of gears. So you have a fairly narrow range of gears, not a whole lot of versatility there. Um, but I, you know, wouldn't imagine someone would take this off-road or take it as a speed demon. It's kind of meant for that last mile. You know, maybe you'd even be riding this in an airport if you wanted to uh, subvert security in some way. Um, but it's not really the kind of bike that you would take uh, on that kind of a trek. Uh, so it's it's a pretty good set of gears. You know, I like it a lot. I think it's well fit for the application. Let's go ahead and talk about the folding part. All right, so Alec is going to show us the folding aspect. We kind of go to, went over the seat a tiny bit and the handlebars, but why don't you go ahead and give it a spin? Right, so right now he's undoing that little um, safety latch. He's got the handlebars swinging those down. Kept the telescoping. He undid the main latch there, which has a locking position. Used his knee to kind of open up uh, the main lever there. Now he's pulling the whole thing uh, in half. Looks like the kickstand is still up, uh, which is kind of giving it a, a unique profile. But there it is. There's the bike all folded up into like a nice little box. And you can see the, the stark difference between this and the bike when it's completely opened. Uh, so that pulls up pretty good and yeah, he's hefting that up. You can grab it by the handle there um, it's Certainly doable. So the battery pack while we're at it, you know, you can hold this for a long time. It won't take long but <laughs> The battery pack is actually mounted inside of the frame right there. So you would take a key. Do you have that key on you by yeah. chance? Okay, it's, it's right there on the handlebars. Perfect uh, So you take that unique key you open it up and then the battery actually slides out in this metal case and this is a 48 volt battery. It's a 48 volt, seven amp hour battery that slides right into the, the main tubing there. It also has an on off switch, uh, which is accessible on the outside. So you put that in, twist the key around and then boom, you're set. And this of course is the main terminal that comes into contact uh, with the battery itself. Uh, so while we're here, I'll kind of show you as he slid it in, there's this little window that opens up so you can actually access the main on off switch as well as the charge port on the battery itself. So it kind of goes through the frame into the battery directly. So that's a pretty good uh, design there. Everything's all nice and compact and built in. As well, you kind of have this little guard right here that is protecting the motor from being hit around as you're folding or unfolding or wheeling the bike around. And yeah, he's gonna go ahead and open it back up and put it into the riding position. Doesn't take terribly long uh, to get everything together. And then, you know, off you go. You kick stand up and ready to rock. So. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in and talk about the electric system, my favorite part. All right, so we've kind of moved into the shade a little bit so I can show you the features of the display. We'll kind of start there. So the display has a big part of, well, interfacing with the rider. So it has this on-off switch uh, right on the left hand of the handlebars on the remote. Press that on-off switch and then it will boot up and it'll show you a couple of things. It shows you your main speed or your driving speed uh, on this kind of automotive sort of uh, speedometer looking thing. And it has your miles per hour and little digital numbers right there in the middle. Uh, the pedal assist is right here uh, in the center uh, of the bike. When you press the up or down arrows, that will increase or decrease the amount of pedal assist. It'll increase or decrease the power output as you pedal. That's what pedal assist does. 
And when you press the I for information, that will cycle through the metrics down here um, in you know a fairly good order of max speed, average speed, uh, trip set, a timer, things like that. And if you want to, uh, you can also turn on the lights manually uh, by pressing the light button. That'll actually dim the display a tiny bit and then the headlight and the tail light will come on. And those are routed through the main battery pack. Now we'll go ahead and turn it off to kind of brighten up the screen again. Uh, there also is a USB charge port on the side of the display right there, uh, which is pretty neat. And there also is the feature of the little light uh, indicate or light sensor in the display itself. So we can't really illustrate it too much now because it's broad daylight, but if you go through a tunnel or in a dark area, this little sensor will turn on the lights automatically. It'll dim the, the display, it'll turn on the front light and the tail light. Um, so you, and then once you get out of it, it'll turn it back off again. This is kind of like an override if you just want to turn them on or leave them on the whole time. Uh, so that's what the light button will do. So that's the display in a nutshell. It's nice and thin. It's got a nice colorful readout. I mean, the camera doesn't pick it up that well in daylight, but it does show up. I can see it quite clearly. Uh, I just got to get around the camera. It does have this kind of like swiveling mount. If you kind of unscrew that, you can change the position or orientation uh, of the display. Also, while we're up here, uh, there, this bike does have a throttle. So when you press down, we'll go ahead and turn down the pedal assist a little bit. <laughs> when you press down on that, uh, that little tab right there, then the bike will kind of go forward. It'll kind of lurch a little bit. Of course, it feels a lot better when you're actually sitting on the bike, but if you want to expressly engage the motor, anytime you press down on that tab, boom, the bike starts to go. Uh, so that's what the throttle does. And that's part of the electric system up front, uh, but in the middle of the bike, that's where all the, all the uh, action happens, uh, so to speak. So this is a mid-drive motor. This is the Dapu motor that's actually putting out 350 to 500 watts uh, of power. And you guys have it set up for something around that, is that right? Yeah, we're using a 15 amp controller, so it's actually capable of 500 to 720 watts. Uh, so you, you have a lot of peak power and uh, plenty of continuous power as well. And that really helps you with acceleration and hill climbing. Right. So yeah, that's a good point about the acceleration and hill climbing. So this bike is totally equipped to do that. It's an electric bike after all. Uh, but this one is using a torque-based pedal assist system in the mid-drive. So aside from the fact that it has the benefits of balance being a mid-drive, it also has a built-in torque sensor that is the primary uh, input from the rider to get the electric system moving. So what that means is that, uh, let's see, we'll go to the other side and show you that pedal. With a lot of electric bikes, particularly uh, some of the folding bikes, you'll see a cadence sensor, uh, which engages pedal assist that is based on the rotations of the pedals. It's actually going around a little disc that you can see. And that's fine for some kind of, you know, uh, some systems that are really don't have any tension on them, you know, something like a cruiser. Uh, but it actually doesn't provide the most smooth and natural biking experience the way that a torque sensor would, such as on this bike. So on this particular bike, when you press down on the pedals, when you put any kind of tension, that's what it's reading. It's reading the amount of stress that you put on the pedals. When your foot down here kind of pressing on it, that information kind of goes through. I mean, the, the tension goes through the, the mechanical system in here into the controller uh, and the sensors, which are built into the motor. And it reads that information and translates that into output through the chain ring. And it does so without having to turn the cranks all the way around uh, in order for it to read. It has a more sensitive uh, input point. So that actually offers a really natural riding experience. It makes a bike like this feel more normal, feel much more approachable as a result. Uh, a lot of electric bikes, particularly the really strong ones, kind of rely on a throttle and they feel, they feel really fun. They're like a motorcycle, but something like this is much more natural, much more of a bicycle the way that you would remember it with kind of 10 year old legs. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a spin and show you what it All right, so it's actually a, a fairly blissful ride uh, out here uh, on the folding bike, the electric folding bike. That's pretty fun. You know, it's very maneuverable. That's something that I didn't really get to go over uh, talking about the specifications was that it has a, you know, a somewhat narrow uh, handlebar set and a small wheel that's kind of out in front a little bit. And it has a fairly narrow wheelbase from front to back uh, as well. And those things combine together together and give it a very maneuverable feel. I mean, you can turn really tight on this thing if you need to, which right now I'm going a little fast. I'm going about 10 miles an hour, so I probably wouldn't want to. But if you're going slow enough, 
and you got that throttle you can goose it a little bit you could totally do some pretty tight maneuvering so i could see this bike being very handy uh, for someone who travels if they got to get this up and out through a banister or around an airport or something like that uh, it'd be really easy to kind of move around and turn on nice tight spots yeah there we go i'm going a little bit slower about eight miles an hour now so it's pretty tight uh, really nice uh, so it feels pretty good at high speed too that's something i should mention we'll go ahead and crank it up a little bit there we go kind of utilize that pedal assist there we go hit the throttle and off we go so i like the throttle aspect <laughs> a mid-drive torque sensing throttle is a, a good combo for me but here we are rocking at about 17 miles an hour uh, right now and yeah it feels feels quite stable more stable than the trikes that i've been riding at this speed which is nice um it's good so i like it it's pretty well built i think that having the weight in the middle with the mid drive as well as the battery weight uh makes a lot of sense uh makes a lot of sense on something like this so it's very comfy you know i don't maybe not comfortable is the word very uh uh familiar i'd say very familiar it looks pretty goofy with the small wheels and you know the odd size but it feels like a normal bike you know it's not something that you would be uh, learning you know a whole lot on how to ride it and with the torque sensing pedal assist it's quite familiar so i like it i think it's i think it's a good choice um so let me go ahead and show you a little bit of the bike all right guys so here we are checking out the electric folding bike uh, with the dapu motor this is like the 500 watt uh, version capable of 750 total uh, let's go ahead and crank it all the way up to level five pedal assist and we will go ahead and race up and down here uh, on the dock a little bit and uh, show you what it can do Alright, so there you go. There's the bike in action. It was kind of fun. We got up to 20 miles an hour pretty quickly. Uh, had a little bit of a hiccup there changing gears as we turned around, but kind of corrected itself. So we're off to the races again. Alright guys, thanks for checking out the electric folding bike with me. Uh, it's been pretty fun. I'm kind of surprised at how well it balances. It's got a, a lot of good weight distribution on it. I really like that motor too. I think it's uh, growing on me uh, quite a bit. So yeah, if you want to check out this electric bike along with the other ones from the guys here in Pennsylvania that do electric bike technologies and uh, electricbikestore.com, uh, you can check out this bike as well as their other ones on our website, electricbikereview.com. On that website, you can compare this with all sorts of other bikes and brands. We've probably done uh, more than a thousand electric bike reviews by now. Uh, you can also go there to participate in the forums if you want to kind of hang out, ask a question, and sort of participate in the community, that kind of thing. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.